guys we're live again um just give me a minute or so here just to get this all shared around um i do not have a joan yet so i want to be able to uh get this out there if you have not joined our group amber and i have a group on uh, Facebook called Queen Beaters. Be sure to go over and join our group. Uh, it's a fun group. We post all kinds of information. If you hear noises, it's my elderly dog. As I always say, she likes to hang out in here with me. So um, that is <laughs> what's happening in the background. <laughs> so, uh, but yes, please stop over and join our Queen Beaters group on uh, Facebook and don't forget to follow me on YouTube if you have not done so. And, um, sorry guys, just give me one moment here. I don't want to, yep. Okay. I think we got it. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so we got everything shared out. I'm going to be trying to find someone to help me out with this. So we don't have this at the beginning of every live. So hopefully pretty soon I'll be able to get somebody that can come in and help me do the sharing and the, you know, promotion of the stream yard and all that stuff. Hi, Joan. I miss you. <laughs> I miss you, lady. How are you? Um, but yeah, so hopefully I can get something lined up for that. Uh, get somebody in here to help me with the sharing and all that stuff, speaking of. <laughs> but Joan's too busy. She doesn't need another to take on another designer, that's for sure. So um, today we're going to be making uh, a Helix pendant. This is the one that we were supposed to make uh, <laughs> last week. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, I was sick. But, you know that happens. So we are going to be making this fun wire wrapped helix pendant using natural stones. Um, you just need a little bit of today. I'm going to show you with 20 gauge wire because for um, newbies that maybe aren't so used to using uh, wire, 20 gauge is a good place to start. I did in the um, information for this video, I did say 18 gauge. 18 gauge is my preference because it gives it a little bit more stability. But like I said, today we'll do the 20 and you can start with the 20 or even like a, a 22 if you have never done wire wrapping before, just to practice, to get used to it, all that stuff. So let's get the uh, camera turned down. Oh, hi, Terry. Yes, I am. I'm feeling better today. Thank you so much, honey. So we're going to turn the camera down here. And it goes black for just a moment, guys, but I'm still with you. Just takes a second for it to come on. So as I said at the beginning, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, head on over and do that. I appreciate any subscriptions, any likes, any comments, anything like that just helps me grow and it's much appreciated. That is where these videos live after they are live on Facebook. So if you need to reference back to it, that's where you're going to have to go to find it. So enough housekeeping, let's get on to our project. So this is our Helix Pendants. These are our Helix Pendants, words are hard. Um, <laughs> and there's a variety of different ones that I've done here. Um, this one is like a super messy, just free form, go for it type um, of helix pendant. And there's no loop on the bottom, you'll notice. We just did a basic, uh, oh, thank you, Terry, um, for posting my YouTube channel. I appreciate that, honey. Um, <clears throat> And please, guys, when you're if you're here right now, share it out to your friends, share it out to your uh, BD groups. All is so appreciated. Thank you. Um, so this one does not have a loop on the bottom. This one is just, you know, just pendant. I like to put a loop on. My link to him is terrible, but I am trying and be helpful. LOL. You do a wonderful job. Thank you, Terry. Um, this is just rounded on the bottom. You could actually hang. Um, you know, dangles some items at the bottom of this if you wanted to maybe uh, put some 
Swarovski bicones or a little crystal or whatever you had there on the bottom. But this one is just like a super free form, just go for it, no holds barred type piece. This one is pretty much the complete opposite of that. So for everyone that is out there, you want I wanted to kind of give you ideas on how these can be made. The sky's the limit, basically. But this one is a very neatly done um, basic, just circles around each bead. And we're doing a loop on either end. And I did dangle a crystal off the bottom of this one, which I think is super cute touch. But it's just, this is made with an 18 gauge wire. So you can tell that this is um, thicker, you know, and it's going to give you more stability in your piece. It's not going to bend around. And that's a big part of why I like the 18 gauge for this project. So there's that one. And then this is kind of a middle of the ground, of middle ground type of pendant um, where it's, a, it's swirly. But it's not as crazy wild as this one is. Um, it gives you all that interest, but is a little more neat, if you know what I mean. And this does have a loop on either end. So, you know, like I said, the sky's the limit between the wire colors and the natural stones or whatever you want to put in the middle. I like using the round beads because I think it looks the best. But, you know, you guys always come up with great ways to do things. So I'll be curious to see what you come up with. So let's just set these over here. And I'm going to go over the beads with you here. Some bead sizes you can use. Here is a 12 millimeter. You can pretty much, you know, whatever size you're comfortable with. And these are my 10s. Okay. And then I also have eights and then some sixes so you could use any variety of um, bead that you like any size that you like um, but like I said I do like the round ones because it makes it easy to put the swirls around it so I think today we're going to work with a larger bead just so it's easier to see we may do a few of these just so you guys can get an idea on the variety that you can do. So we'll start with these really pretty faceted, I believe these are agate, I don't know for sure. Um, natural stone names were never my uh, strong point, but we'll go with that. So <laughs> those, and then um, I'm just gonna pull out some 20 gauge artistic wire. This color is the antique brass. <clears throat> And you're going to want to make sure you give yourself plenty of wire for this because if you, especially if you want to do all these loops, if you just do the wraps, you're still going to need quite a bit of wire, but just not near as much. Okay. So usually what I'll do is I will roll off maybe about 30 inches because I'd rather have more than I need rather than not enough. So I'm going to cut about that amount off. If I can find my trimmers, there we go. So we're going to cut about 30 inches off. Let me turn this light down so maybe that's a little better for you. Is that helpful with the lights? Um, <clears throat> and the first thing I'm going to do here, guys, and it's hard doing wire on camera, but especially if you're working with a long piece, but I'm just kind of running it through my hands and straightening it out and warming it up. Oh, hi, Karen. No problem. Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon to you as well, honey. So we're just warming it up with our hands a little bit. This is a 30 inch piece of wire in case anyone missed, missed it. And then I'm just going to cut this little kinked end off here. So what I'm going to do with this large piece of wire that I have, I'm going to go about a quarter to a third of the way up. You can see that piece there. Hi, Carol. Um, and we're just going to take our round nose pliers, which... Let me grab them. Sorry, guys. I thought I had them over here. Uh, thought I grabbed everything. There we go. We're just going to take our round nose plier. Like I said, we're going to go a quarter to a third of the way up. We're going to grab with our round nose pliers right in that spot. And we're going to start to bend our wires around the round nose pliers. Okay. 
just like that. Okay, I wish this camera would focus right, but that gives you an idea there. So we're just crisscrossing those wires over that round nose. Okay, so I'm going to take that out and then I'm just going to grab my tweezer pliers here and I'm going to bend. This is going to be the long wire. I say this wire, but the long wire is going to be the one that we're wrapping with. The shorter wire is going to be the one that we're putting our beads onto. So I want to bend this one up just like so because it's shorter. That's what I want to put my beads on. And I want to have all that extra wire to be able to make my loops and everything like that. So then I'm just going to turn this sideways so I can get to it. I have the long piece going this way and the shorter piece going this way. I want this popped up just like so straight up. So then that way, I'm going to bend this one sideways. We're just going to give it a little crook right here and hold our loop. And we're just going to do a wrap loop around this base loop. This is to do if you want to have a loop on the bottom to do a pendant or a little um, dangle, excuse me, on the bottom. Okay, and I'm just going to neaten those up a little bit just by squeezing, squeezing them down and just neaten them up a little bit with my pliers. Okay, so now we're ready to roll. We have this wire sticking straight up. This is our shorter wire and our longer wire is out to the left. Okay, so I'm just going to start by picking up. This is a 12 millimeter bead, but as I stated, you can use whatever size of round that you have. And it's just as simple as sliding one of the beads on. And I'm going to hold on to the loop on the bottom with my fingers and also hold on to this bead. And I'm going to take this wire and I'm kind of going to shape it out a little bit with my finger. Because I know I want to do loops or I want to do swirls on this one. Okay. And I'm just shaping that out a little bit just to kind of warm it and get it going the direction I want it to go. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to start to bend that across the main wire there. This We'll call this the core wire. Okay. We're bending that across the core wire and we're going to wrap. If you hear the wire hitting into things, I'm sorry because it's just a long piece. So that's unfortunately what's going to happen till we at least get some of it used up. But so we have a loop on the outside edge of that. So we're wrapped there. So I'm going to put on my next bead. Slide that on. Okay. And turn this back around to the front. Now our wire is sticking out, the, the long wire is sticking out the right hand side. Okay. And we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to start working that wire to get a little bit of a loop. Started there, a little bit of a um, curve started. And I don't want it quite that drastic, so I'm going to kind of coax it with my thumb a little bit just to kind of go down a little bit and be a little more reasonable for the first go round. And then I'm going to wrap that around. Okay. Next, you put your third bead on, just like so. And... We're going to do the same thing. We're going to work this, warm this wire on the side and just get a little curve into it and then bring it around the outside of the bead and across the core wire. Okay. And then we're just going to give it a wrap. I'm going to do a couple times there just to make sure it's good and secure. So now we have all of our beads on the core wire. Now is when we can start then. And we're just going to leave this core wire sticking straight up while we're working on everything else. Okay. So now I'm going to get this really long piece of wire back over here. <laughs> and we're going to start working our way back down. And we're going to start doing the designs into the wire and to make it an interesting piece, you know, just to kind of give it some life now. 
All right, so I'm coming from behind there, okay, behind the core wire, and I'm out to the side here, and I have my loop, and I'm just going to give once around the core wire, and I'm going to go back up and make another curve, and I'm going to mirror this curve that we did up here, okay, on the top, and I'm going to give it a wrap. Okay, and I want it to be coming out the other side at this point. So I'm going to do the same thing. It's all about using that thumb to give your, um, your wire warmth and to give it a little bit of shape. Hi, Becky. You're not late, honey. I don't know why you didn't get a notification. That's strange. Well, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for joining me, joining us today. Okay. And so we've warmed that and we're going to make, I'm going to do a smaller loop on that side, I think is what I like. It looks better to me. And then I'm going to wrap around the core. That core is very important because you're always going back to that core to wrap, to be able to keep everything contained. Okay. So now I'm going to do a loop on this side. Now, if say if I wanted to go back over to the other side and I don't want to put anything over here, we would just wrap it one more time and get it to the other side. This is what helps to get your wire traveling to, by wrapping it around that core, traveling to where you need it to use it. Okay, that's the basic concept of it. And I'm going to make a little loop on that side, a smaller loop, and then wrap. And then I'm going to go a bigger loop on this side, okay? And it's all about just slowly shaping that wire and getting it into the position that you want, okay? And as you're going, you can adjust things and make sure that, you know, it's looking the way you want it to. So I'm just going to mirror, like we did up above, I'm going to mirror that other wire to kind of make it, you know, give it lots of interest that way. All right. So I'm wrapping, going to the other side, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to mirror this small wire or this smaller loop on that side and just wrap again. Okay. So we're getting a little bit of, um, Movement in the piece, we're getting uh, some interest. So again, we're just doing the curve. Our wire isn't hitting quite as many things at this point because it's shorter, but okay. And I'm gonna wrap. It's always come back to the core, travel, make it travel to where you want to put your next loop basically. Okay guys, all right. So, do that loop there on the side, on the left side, wrap on my core, come back over. I think I want, what do I want to be in my bottom? Maybe this will be my bottom because then I can keep this one a little tighter on the top. So it's a little more graduated down, okay? And then you can work your, if you have enough wire, you can work yourself back down again if you want to put more loops on. And again, we're just warming and slowly rounding. Sorry, I was off the camera there. Your wire. Just like so. And again, this is the top. So I don't, I'm not going to go too over the top because I want my bottom ring to be the largest just for um, to make it pleasant to look at to make it more um, attractive to the eye basically words are hard you know guys you know me my words <laughs> so we're just doing the same thing here just working that slowly <clears throat> All right, and then wrapping the core. 
and then I think I'm going to go back over to this side on the this is going to be our bottom now and I'm going to do a nice size loop here in the bottom and you know this may be too large for a lot of people but since we're using the 12 millimeter beads in here I'd like it to have a little bit more presence so you can see I'm making that loop quite a bit larger and then I'm just going to wrap it around the bottom here and now I'm at the point with my wire where I really don't have enough to do any more loops so this is where I'm going to end this part of the wire I'm just going to get that neat up in there before I finish doing another wrap okay I'm just kind of moving it around with my fingers, putting it everything where I want it. Again, with the 20 gauge, it, it is easier to move everything around. Um, so if that works for you, that's that would be a good starting point for you is the 20 gauge. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this wire off the bottom. The, the one that we were using to do all the, the wrapping the longest wire that we had and then i'm just going to cut cut that and tuck it in i'm going to cut that just a little shorter and i'm just going to tuck that in just like that okay and then we're just going to do another wrap loop on the bottom all right so, and you can put this wrap loop, you know, as long as you want it. I think I'm going to make mine a decent length on the bottom because uh, for presents, for the size of the beads, etc. So, I'm just going to do my wrap loop. Just like so. Make sure I'm working to fill up that center, okay? Because you don't want there to be a gap in your wraps. Since you did some of the wraps down here with another wire, you have to be careful that you're making sure to get all that filled in, guys. Okay. I think we're good. I think that'll overlap it, and I don't want to do that. So let's snip that off. Now, you could also use this and make like a, a swirl on the bottom. Just a short little swirl or... Um, we could roll it like this. I'll show you how to do the rolling of it to give make a little spiral. So if I want a spiral on the bottom, I have this little piece of wire sticking out here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to cut a little bit off of this. And then I'm just going to take my round nose pliers and make a loop on the end. Just like that. And I like to go in when I make a loop and trim it, use the flush side of my flush cutters toward the loop and snip off a little bit of the loop. And it seems like then I can get a more round loop instead of an oval. Okay. So then I'm just going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm going to roll that. And as I'm rolling, I'm grabbing the loop, pressing it forward, and I'm also pushing up with my index finger on the bottom, okay? And just giving that a roll. So every roll, I'm keeping that finger tight on there. My thumb and my middle finger are holding the wire. And then this is what we're pressing against. And I'm doing the inertia I want going to the left there. And we're squeezing tight on the loop because if I've done a lot of these loops, guys, and I can tell you at the beginning of doing these loops, um, I scratched a lot of my wire because I wasn't holding on tight enough when I did it. So you want to get a good grasp on that wire as you're rolling the swirl in. Oops. Just like so. And you can see how nice that looks. 
oops, if I was on the screen, what is my deal today? So there's our little swirl, this is our wire wrap piece. And then you would just um, do a head pin, um, use your one step looper, and you know, make yourself a little dangle with a Swarovski crystal or um, Preciosa or something like that. That's what I like to use because it really makes them over the top pretty, you know. So there's that one. So let's do this simple, the simple one for folks that maybe don't like this kind of wild swirly look. I think it looks great, but some folks just want something simple and tighter and uh we'll so we'll do this one next and i'm gonna get i think a piece of silver german style wire and i'm gonna pick up these brighter blues because that'll be easier for you to see and i believe this is just somehow light again i'm gonna cut a nice long piece of wire around 30 inches. Okay, so I measured that out. All right, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to warm it up with our hands a little bit. I'm going to move these. So I'm getting wild in here with this wire, and we're just warming it up with our hands, just getting it ready to work. Okay, and it'll work much better for you and be more flexible if you can warm up your wire. Okay, again, we're going to take a quarter to a third of the wire and we're going to go in and we're going to use our round nose pliers. Actually, let's do one that we're not going to put a loop on the bottom. How about that? Because then that way, that'll give you an idea if you didn't want to have the loop on the bottom, what you could do. So what we're just going to start by doing, we're going to add a loop at the top because we want to make sure that our beads don't roll off. Okay, so the easiest way to do that is just make our loop on the top and that they don't come off the end of the wire. And we're just going to do a wrap loop there. Okay. Snip that. Tuck it. Okay. And then we're going to be, we're working with just a full wire at this point. We're not going in and making a loop in a bend or anything like that. We're going to slide our first. This is onto the, the bottom of the wire. We're going to slide on one piece of our highlight and slide that up to our loop just like so okay and then we're just going to start by doing a loop right out of the gate doing a curve okay we're going to start using our fingers like we did before and you can see i'm kind of i've got that bent like at the base just a little bit so i know that that's where that's going to be tight against my loop on the top and I'm just using my fingers to shape that the way I want. And then I'm going to bring it across the top. Okay. And again, we're going to do a snug look here. We're going to do a nice, neat wrap. So I'm just bringing that in nice and close. And I'm just using my fingers to kind of form that more around the bead. And then we're going to do that again. Bring that around. I'm going to bring the wire to the other side. Just like that. And I'm holding tightly with my pointer finger and my thumb on that bead. And I'm just working that wire around the other side. Again, I'm taking my, my finger and I'm just pushing down on that wire as I'm rolling it around the bead. And you can go around as many times as you like just however you want it to look. And I think I'm gonna do one more here and then bring it to the bottom. Now, once I'm at the bottom of this bead, you can see I've sort of stopped in the middle there. 
So what we're going to do then is we're just going to take our pliers right where the middle of the hole of that bead is, and we're just going to kind of give it a bend. Okay. So you can see it looks like now it's coming out the middle of the bead. This is to make sure that you're keeping everything, uh, everything um, centered. Yes, I do too. I love the Sleeping Beauty uh, turquoise color. I wish I really had Sleeping Beauty turquoise, but that that is definitely not what this is. <laughs> I would love to have some of it someday, but we'll see. Who knows? <clears throat> So we put our next bead on. We're centered very nicely there. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to start working this around. All right. And we're going to give this a wrap onto the main core wire because we want to kind of stabilize everything. Okay. So I'm just going to give that a go round. That kind of slipped up a little bit. So. You got to be careful when you're doing your wraps, especially with the 20 gauge wire, because it's so flexible, it can pull your wire in odd directions. Okay. So again, we're just working it. We're going to pull it around the bead and we're going to wrap it by keeping pressure with our thumb on the top and our forefinger on the bottom. And we're going to do some tight loops around just like so. Okay. And I'm just going to take that loop there and just kind of press it in a little bit because I want it to be looking neat and I don't want that loop sticking out so much on the bottom. Okay. And I'm going to bring that over again about to the center and we're going to put a a bend in our wire so it's again looking like it's coming out of the center bottom of the second bead and we're going to put our third bead on okay just like that and we're going to start the same process guys we're going to use that wire warm warmed wire and we're just going to start shaping it around our bead slowly this is a very, like I said, this is a very neat, tight, clean look doing it this way. If that's what you like, then this one's for you guys. Okay. So again, I'm just keeping that pressure. And you can see, guys, as I'm doing this with this 20 gauge wire, how everything's kind of moving and shimmying and stuff. And as I said, if you use 18, you will not get that. You won't get it as much. Joan says, I bought a, a suite of Sleeping Beauty turquoise jewelry years ago. A set, I bet you mean, honey. Yeah, years ago when it was much cheaper to buy. Oh, you're so lucky, honey. That was a smart move. Smart, smart move. Okay, and I'm just still continuing to roll that. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this the whole way around the bottom, just holding it snugly as I'm rolling it, okay? And I'm going to work my way up and do some more wraps around the core because I want to kind of tighten everything up. I want everything to be um, not, not moving as much as it is, you know, just kind of tighten it up, make sure that we're not going to get a piece that feels flimsy, okay? So I'm going to go work my way back up. I put another loop on the outside of this one. And I'm just going to kind of keep it neat and tidy in there. So we're still doing the same thing with our beads. Okay. I want it to be snug enough in there so it blends in. Okay. And then I'm going to do a couple more wraps here. All right. And it is. It stiffens it up a little bit more when you do that with the 20 gauge. Gives you more of a base for your um beads a stronger base all right and then i'm just going to bring that from behind and i'm going to wrap it around and then over the top of this bead again i want to keep everything nice and snug and i'm making sure as i'm doing this that i'm keeping everything centered and where i want it so i'm not locking anything down that i don't like the looks of 
okay and then i'm just going to wrap around the top loop that we made with our wire okay all right so once you get that wrapped you can make as thick of a base as you want on your wrap loop i think it looks nice when you can make a thicker base on them and then I think I'm going to do a small swirl in the front. So I'm going to take and leave myself maybe about two inches of wire there. Okay. And I want to be able to bring this across the front because I want the swirl to lay down the front of the bead. I don't know. I need to move this up because I keep going off camera. So I want to bring that across the front and that's where my swirl is going to be. And we're going to do the same thing as we did before. We're going to snip that wire off and then we're going to take our round nose pliers and make a little loop and snip it. Snip it, snip it. Did you come out of there? There we go. And then we're just going to take our pliers and we're going to roll that up just like so. What gauge wire is that? Uh, Becky, oh, you like both of the looks. Good. Thank you. Um, this is actually 20 gauge wire, but as I explained that I do like using the 18 gauge better. I use wire a lot, so my fingers are hardened, so it doesn't bother me. But if you are, and I don't know, you know, how much you use wire, but um, I think for a beginner person that is just getting into using wire, I think using the 20 gauge is a good place to start um, to me because your fingers aren't toughened up just yet. So you don't want to, you know, get discouraged as you're doing it and you're getting finger cramps, you know. So this is 20, but I do recommend 18 as you advance. You could even use 16 if you were very advanced. And I said, you know, you could even start with 22 to practice, you know, if it's something that's very new to you. Okay. So I'm still just rolling my loop and I'm going to actually drop that down in the front, just like so. And I can tell you from experience, for me, it's easier for me to make pendants out of this design because I've tried to do earrings and for the love of God, I can never get, <laughs> I can never get them to match. So that's why you'll see me doing this a lot, just doing the pendants with this technique. So I just make pendants and it works out just fine. So I'm just adjusting it, making it look nice, getting things where I want it. And there you go. That one is a lot more refined, I think, than this one. And especially more than this one. This was my wild child here. <laughs> so I am going to turn the camera back up here and get my other one up. And we will say goodbye. <laughs> So guys, we did awesome. We made um, some fun helix pendants. Two different kinds here are very neat version with no loop on the bottom. And then are a little bit more of a freeform piece with the loop on the bottom that you could add a crystal. Oh, thank you. Joan says they're very unique and pretty. Yeah, I really like this one, this turquoise one. This is like one of my faves, so maybe keeping that one. And I do like the rose gold. This is, I think, um, matte zebra jasper. I don't know if that's a thing. <laughs> but I think for myself, I would like to do a neater one made like this. This this is a little bit too crazy for even me. And we all know I've got the crazies, so... <laughs> So, guys, I want to thank you so much for joining me. <clears throat> you are very welcome. Thank you. Love the tips for the spiral. Great. Great, Carol. 
um, thank you guys so much for joining me and please um, visit my other social media platforms and give me a thumbs up or subscribe. That always helps me out. And I will see you guys next week. We're going to make another fun project. I'll be posting the event very soon. So you can see that. And Terry says, I love that you could even change up the colors of the beads in the helix. Thank you. You are very welcome, sweetie. You are very welcome. And I will see you guys next week. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye-bye.